is your wife always pestering you to get on and get that DIY job finished? Well, mine is. So I did a deal with her. If she wants the job done, I need bigger and better tools. So, turn out with the old, and it's in with the new. Let's get it open and get a good look at it. So this is Makita's 40 volt XGT, 305 mil miter saw. And it looks like a beaut. And it's nice that it's all just got a bit of cardboard packaging on it, no polystyrene to worry about. And the AWS, happy days. Right, let's get all these bits out and put it together. Who says bigger isn't better? So, it's got a dual vacuum system on here by the looks of things, so uh, there's two places, one vacuum connection. So that should help catch a lot more of the usual rubbish. Wow, this is a bit of a lump though. Oh. Yeah, definitely not going to be the easiest tool to hump around site. I have to admit, but... Just look at it. That's one amazing saw. <laughs> this fantastic machine the other bits that it comes with in the box are dust collection bag we have a clamp instructions which you do need because this is actually quite complicated to set up and I've read through them and hopefully I can explain to you how the instructions are in real life so you don't have to look at these and of course the all-important blade on top of that, the AWS receiver, tender unit, and the knob, which fits in right at the front of the tray here. So just to get it all started, let's get the bits out of the way. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention is it also comes with this handy bit of right angle plastic, which presumably assume the camera can pick that up, is so you can make sure that your blade is square against the fence and, and, the, and the base. So, initially, what we have here is obviously the XGT 40 volt, 305 mil or 12 inch miter saw. It has a dual venting system here for dust extraction. And by dual, I mean it has a two points where obviously it comes out the bottom and out of the top. Now with the dust bag, there is one slight thing with it. It doesn't fit. So when you use the dust bag, you can only use it from the top section. So if you come the camera around here, you see there's a release button on here that literally just pops off. And that releases and the dust bag can sit on the back. If you wanted to, I suppose you could just put that into a bucket, or if you really wanted to uh, release it, um, you may, for example, have a piece of debris which is just too big to get sucked up in there when you are using the vacuum on here. Then what you do, there's a little clip right here, and similarly on the other side, and you simply just squeeze them in and pull it out. And that will allow you to get in there or to even shake the tube out to uh, get any large bits of debris out. And it just clips straight back in again. So we'll just remove this for the time being because I will be using it with a vacuum later. Be it, unfortunately, not an AWS vacuum. So it just clips in. On the side here, it's this little black knob. And there's one on the back as well. So what we do is just push down on the blade at the front very slightly. That releases the tension. Then you can pull it out turn it around and that releases the tilt mechanism. Same here on the back. There's another one right here. This releases the slide guide. 
You may or may not need to use this, but if you do need to use it, you simply do exactly the same thing, pull it out, twist it, and there we go. The great thing about this slide guide as well is because it comes towards you instead of away from you, so to speak, with like the older style uh, mitosaurs, like the JCB one I showed you right at the very start, is that this is the back of the machine. And it won't go any further back. There's no sliding going back. So you can put this hard up against the wall and it helps maximize the amount of space that you can use in your workshop if you're out on site um, or if, perhaps even if you're working in the back of your van. So that's a brilliant plus straight away. Back around the front again. It's already scaled for you. You've got zero, or actually minus two, all the way around to 60 degrees. And then that follows again all the way around to the other side. So you've got a full 120 degrees, in fact, it's actually 124 degrees to play with, to choose whichever angles you like. So just to begin with, I'm just gonna take the little knob here and I'm just gonna bring this round to the zero point. And there's a little hole underneath here. And this simply just screws in. And with all trop saws, all this simply does is when you, when you move it around, you can just lock it off into whichever angle position you wish to have, loosen it, move it back around again. On the very front here, you've got your main release knob, which means you can move it left to right. But also here, there's another one. And if you drop that down, as you move it around, it will take it all the way around without dropping into any of the preset positions. You release it, and you'll see that on the side you've got 22 and a half, you've got 30 degrees, 31.6. As I push it around, they go locked into zero. Take it around again, locked to 15 degrees. So it will lock into the preset defined angles. So if you're working on a job with repetitive angles, you literally just slide it in, lock it around. You don't really have to pay a huge amount of attention to make sure you've got it exactly on because it is exactly where it is. So we center this back up again. Let's tighten that off a bit. At the back here, we've got some very high fence rails. Now, these are great because if you've got a large piece of timber, it gives you a much bigger flat platform to sit on. There's a little handy trick here. If you just come around to the side, you see there's a release knob and the same on the other side. And that literally just unscrews and that can pop off. Now, what do you do with this? Well, you can too big to stick in your pocket. You don't really want to put it down because you'll end up forgetting it. What you do is this. You release the knob here if you haven't already and you pull out your support. Just tighten it back up again. Obviously you pull the support out if you've got long pieces of timber because it gives you the extra rest point. But there's a little clip on the back here and that simply clips it on. I mean, how brilliant is that idea? Take something off, put it somewhere to store it, and you can't lose it. it it's, it's great. Other thing to bear in mind as well, actually, whilst I've got this open, is that if you come in here, hopefully the camera can see, there's a little hand symbol there. And there's perfect handle right in there, and it's the same on the other side. So you obviously you can lift it up, shift it wherever you need to. So I'm just gonna put that back on here for a minute. Now, the main idea, obviously, is to, remove, to be able to remove these guides is because this mitosaur doesn't just do a left to right 60 degree cut. It'll also do mitres either way as well. And obviously, with the big fence in the way, you can't get the tilt because it gets in the way. So you have to remove them in order to get the cut that you need. You can see at the back here, you've got the angles zero degrees through to 45, and it's the same on this side over here. So, how do we change this angle? Well, it's this knob here. In fact, there's two different ways to do it. First way is this knob right on the top here. 
So you unscrew it and you can just tilt it all the way down. Now here's a little fancy trick as well. Knock this little lever over and you see it's locked in at 33.9 degrees. If I pull it out, release it again, it'll lock in again at 22 and a half degrees. Pull it out and it takes it back to zero again. They have quite literally thought of pretty much everything on here, but it gets better because underneath here, there are two more levers, depending which way you want to turn the saw. So if we just release that all the way back to 45 again, if you just lift it off, take the weight off, pull the lever towards you, you can take it further. You can take it all the way to 48 degrees. Because when is there ever a proper right angle corner in a house? Nine times out of 10, then there never is. So you need that extra play on it. So, and this gives it to you. Again, just push it back up. How do you go the other way? Well, if we just bring the camera around to this side, right down at the bottom here, there's another button. So you push that button in, and it should go the other way, which maybe because I've tightened the handle back up, it doesn't want to do it. There we go, so push it in, and that will now allow me to swing the saw in the opposite direction. And again, it has a lever here, so if I need to go up to 48 degrees, just release the weight, pull it forward, and that allows you to come all the way down and take it up to 48. Again, you've still got the different degrees, the locking mechanisms, but you do have to use the lever, which annoyingly is only on one side. It has a very large rubber dust collector at the bottom, which is great, it's nice and flexible, so it doesn't get in the way, and obviously when you tilt the angles, it will flatten and not infringe on your cutting angle. There's another one at the top here, I'll just lift this up. So again, that will help aid all the dust. I can't imagine they'll be 100% perfect. None of these things ever are. So what else does this do? Well, with the clamp, the clamp is very omnidirectional, up and down both ways. You can adjust it obviously on the thread. So you've got one at the back there, and you've got them on the outreach as well for your larger timbers. It does only come with one of these though. Just rotated the saw for ease of camera and just to make it all a bit more visible. On the hand on here, there's a dual safety whereby you have to push the button in at the top before it will allow you to pull the trigger. So normally it will just lock it in. And if you notice, there's a hole in there and that hole is so you can padlock it. So you can stop anybody from using the saw that's not supposed to use it. Great thing when you're on site, or even if you're at home if you've got young children. So to bring it down, you simply push the button, pull the trigger in, and that will release it. If I just lock this off, which is easy to do, put it on the side, push the side pin back in again, and again, you can just have full sliding motion like that. So inside the handle here, there are two switches. One turns the LED light on and off, and this creates a shadow down the blade to where you're cutting. Far more accurate than using a laser. And it also means that if you need to change your blade, you haven't got to adjust the laser to suit because the shadow will always be guided by the size and the shape of the blade. Also on here is the dust extraction button for the AWS. When you pull the trigger, obviously the vacuum will activate, it will work, release the trigger, vacuum will stop but you've got debris around, you're gonna to need to vacuum up, come to the end of the day, you need to clear up around the saw. You push the button, it will override the trigger on the saw and just allow you to use the vacuum as per normal. One thing that you must always do with this saw and with, in fact with any Makita tools or any tools whatsoever, you need to make a note of the serial number. 
theft is through the window at the moment, unfortunately, and it's one way that could help if in the horrible event your tool does get stolen, it would help the police return it to you should it ever get found. But also, if you register the serial number with Makita, you'll get an extra few years warranty with it. Now, the war now with most of the Makita tools, it's different depending on which one you get, um, but majority of them, the serial number is underneath where the battery goes. Now, I'm not gonna show you mine, but this is the area where it goes, or where it is, sorry. So always make a note, go online, make sure you register it, get your extra two years, I think it is, so you get three years in total uh, warranty with Makita. So back to the good stuff. So let's just pull the pin back out. In the side here, there's a little black pin. Now, you push that in, but it locks the mechanism in place so that when you come around the side, oh, what I'll do is I'll just spin this around to make it easier for the camera, loosen it off. It means that you can attach the blade. Now to attach the blade, they thought about this as well because tools always go missing. You need an Allen key. So what would make it done? They fitted it right in here and it clips in in the rail. So you haven't really got an excuse for losing it and it's always there when you need it. So if you need to replace the blade when you're on site, key's there. Now to do the blade, you need to loosen this bolt here. This bolt loosens off, take it out, and then this entire cover slides all the way up and out the way, and then it allows you to get to this part here, which allows you to fit the blade. So I'm gonna have a go at doing this right now, and uh, then we can plug a battery in. It's a bit really obvious here. First thing you must do when going anywhere near the blade on this, is make sure the battery is not in it. So there's no way it can turn on. What we do, now we've done that, is we just loosen the bolt off up here, And then that allows the whole guard to shift up out of the way. So it gets you into the mechanism down here. Now, whatever you do, do not break or release the spring on this guard. Because if that happens, you've got to send that back to Makita. So same key again. Hopefully that will, no, that won't stay out of the way, unfortunately. You see that spinning? So the little button I was telling you about a minute ago on the other side, you need to be able to push that in. It gets a little bit tricky one-handed actually. Sometimes you need an assistant just to hold the guard up out of the way. Well, there you go. The button's pushed in, it's locked in position, and now I can release the bolt. Opposite lock thread, just to be confusing. So that comes out eventually. There we go. And then you can take the plates off. And there we have it. So obviously this disc will go back onto the tool first and making sure that the all lines up with a square locking edge on there. So as you can see the square on the edge there. It's very much like an angle grinder really. Just make sure it just slides into place. Release that again. And then taking your blade, ensure that you have it in the correct direction of how it's going to cut. I'll just take the cover off. Do I want to cut? Yes, take the cover off. Be careful at this point because this is obviously very sharp. I mean you could leave the cover on until afterwards if you wanted, but it would be much easier to do it now, otherwise you'd end up having to, to cut it to get it off. The other thing you need to make sure of as well is that the... I can never remember the name of it, but this circular bit here fits 
and it's the correct size for the hole of the blade because you don't want it jumping up and down or it'll be cutting in an odd direction. So you simply slide that up into position, drop it over. Again, make sure that the holes line up. Here's a little tip I just thought of. You can come round here and you can rest the guard cover on your shoulder. Also means you put your finger on the back to the, to the lock and then use your other hand to attempt to get the bolt in. Which it just doesn't want to do at the moment. I'll tell you why, it's because I've been an idiot. I'd forgotten it was opposite lock. Make sure that is nice and tight. And before you drop the cover, just rotate it by hand, just to check that it's seated correctly. Now what you can do is just put, drop the cover back on and screw it back together. Always make sure that it's back in position all the way. As you can see, it's just got a little bit stuck behind the nut there. There we go. Get this, the uh, case that happens to you, it's the actual guard cover. As it comes down, it actually pulls the plate down. So you can't get the locking, locking pin above the nut. So you just need to release the guard a bit and then you can see it lifts up. Then you can get it in there. I make these mistakes, so hopefully you won't have to. But again, let's make sure it's in there nice and tight. And then don't forget to put this back. And get this out of the way. Now again, before you put the battery in it, you need to make sure that this is adjusted correctly. And that when you push the blade down, it's not going to hit the curve board and it's not going to go too far and actually physically go through the saw itself or hit too far back. If you find that it doesn't cut deep enough or it's cutting too far, in the top there are two adjustments here. Let me just lock this off. This is your deadbolt, this one right here. This one will set how far the saw blade will go. Once you've adjusted it, you shouldn't need to adjust it again, unless obviously you change the blade or the blade starts to wear, so you need to minutely adjust it. The bigger one at the back is so you can decide on the actual depth you're using, or the actual gauge you want to cut down to, because there's a little handle here and you can pull that across and then moving the adjustment on the back there, you can set how far you wish to plunge the blade into your timber. See, it's stopped. And again, you just push it in and it'll take it all the way through. The curve board here has three screws on either side. Now the curve board can be position further in or further out depending on whether you're doing a straight cut or an angle cut. The reasoning behind that is to reduce the amount of push through and burring and splintering that you actually get on your timber as the blade goes through. It's another really good feature. Although it's been factory set, it can't be guaranteed that this will be 100% accurate. And that's why they give you this right angle here. This allows you so that you can just double check that the yeah, basic angles to begin with are all correct. And I'm just going to very quickly put that in a position. So you can just make sure that that is definitely aligned, that's nice and square. But more importantly, if I pull the blade forward, I drop it down again with the battery not in the machine. 
if you come around with the camera, you just check that the blade is square with the base, because if it's not, there's no point in using it. Similarly, with all the angled degree angles along the base and at the back, all the pointers have a screw on them and they can all be adjusted. So double, double check all the angles and the measurements before you start using this machine in anger. But I'm not, because I'm gonna show you how good it is cutting through a piece of sleeper. Well, we'll just put the guards back in place. Guards, the fence, sorry, back in place. Now, obviously, it's a little bit big to do that way, as you can see, although it might, might just about fit underneath that. It does fit underneath there. So you know what? Let's give it a go. Let's see if it'll handle it this way. Well, we'll give it a demo first, just on that way. So as with everything, make sure you've got goggles. If you need ear defenders, they wear ear defenders. Just set your battery. And I'm just gonna use my vacuum here. Like I said earlier, it's not an AWS one, unfortunately. So, uh, but that just fits into the back there. Personally, I prefer to use the vacuums when they're plugged in because the amount of suction is far greater than it is when it runs off batteries, but obviously you can't just use batteries. So, moment of truth. So, you turn the light on. You see it's got an LED light on the top there. And you see how it comes down through there and you can see where it's gonna go. So if I just bring this down, instantly you've got the shadow line along here and it's always always going to be accurate 100% because you can't move a shadow so let's get the vacuum on and get the saw running so it's got a soft start on there to release to reduce the amount of torque load on the blade itself so it just gets it up to speed reduces the impact load on the battery and also, you also saw there that it's got a brake on it, so it doesn't spin on for ages after the cut. That means you can do multiple cuts without having to wait for the blade to slow down to adjust where you're gonna go and cut. So, let's get on with it. Now, as you would expect from my new blade, really, really nice clean cut. But also, if I just flip the bar, the flip the timber over so you can see it, it's a nice splintering. There's very, very little splintering going on there, which is fantastic. And similarly, on the piece of wood I just cut off, there's no splintering on the edge. Now, a lot of that could be down to the kerf board on here, but I haven't adjusted it yet, so I'm putting it down to the brand new blade. It's always worth having decent blades. So let's see if it'll cut the other way around. Obviously, be very, very careful if you do this, lifting the cover up off the blade, get into position, put it down. Let's see if it'll just slice straight down. I thought I was a little bit optimistic on there, but I had to give it a go. But it did go down quite a decent length. Again, if you want to cut diagonals, like I mentioned earlier, just remove the plates off the back. 
clip them into place, you don't lose them. Push the button in the side, once you've, once you've released it. Make sure it lines up where you want it to line up. Well, I have to admit the shadow guide that's what, there you go, you've got the line coming down there. So that's one thing you have to remember with this saw. Because of the shadow light and where the LED light is, it casts down the blade. So whichever angle you're at, always think it's going to be down. So if you mark the top, for example, you have to think ahead and just think where the diagonal is going to go. That's a little thing I've just spotted here. The timber, because of the height of the timber, it's actually getting in the way of the bottom of the saw there. So there is a limit to the size and the angle of the timber that you can cut. But as I've got this here, let's flip it over. Nice cut on the other side. See if I can get a nice angle coming down here. So again, if you, you can see the diagonal, the 45, I've got going on down there on the shadow light, and you can see it meets in the middle of the curve there. So that's an obvious limitation that I've just discovered on here. It won't quite do 45 degrees, 100 mil timber. But how often are you ever gonna need to do that with that? Most timbers, C16s, that kind of timber, you're nowhere near that kind of depth. And even with the vacuum in place, like I said earlier, you're not gonna get everything. You see it's got the timber around the edge as well but having the shoots either way just keep the area around here that little bit cleaner use it a little bit less to tidy up afterwards and obviously if you're going to be using this machine in anger there are several holes front and back where you can physically bolt it down to your worktop if you're keeping it static or if you have a folding frame they usually come with the rails which you can just bolt them onto here and you can attach it to make it far more portable. So I hope you found this valuable and informative. Please let me know in the comments below any questions you may have on this. Um, I'm gonna carry on here and uh, tidy up my man glitter. And uh, until next time, I hope this has been a good video for you to watch. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you very soon. Uh -huh. Uh-huh.